Hi everybody, it's Sarah Cray with Let's Make Art and I teach watercolor and today we are doing our Let's Make Art Matter for our April recipient and that is actually an entire high school, which is awesome. That's several people. It is. So um, Wyandotte, is, Wyandotte High School is located in Kansas City, Kansas, which is not too far from us and we all know that because of the pandemic that school has been really difficult for everybody and especially our heart is going out to these high schoolers who um, are experiencing something that we didn't have to experience and are trying to figure out how to navigate all of that. And so a really lovely teacher wrote in and said that she would love to be able to do digital postcards to her students, take pictures of them, of the ones we will send to her. She'll take pictures of it and digitally send those to her students. That's and then so when cool. they're back for in-person learning, she'll have them hung up, ready to go. So just... We want to take some time to send some love to these kids and be like, you guys are awesome. It has been super difficult. And let's just acknowledge you and say that we're thinking about you. Um, we have Keenan here who's working the cameras. Hello. Thank you for coming today. And so what we're doing today, and I thought that this would be a super fun thing for us to learn, um, is we're doing a version of the spring sunset project, which was in our April box. But I wanted to show you that I cropped a section out. Are we on the overhead cam? Yes, we are. So you see how that lines up? Beautifully. With the painting? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I just wanted to show you guys that like, I know that when we see a full project or if we're out in the wild and we see like this landscape and we're like, that's really beautiful, I wanna paint that. You can like zoom in and crop it down to fit. And that's why if you see like artists on show doing this and kind of looking through, they're actually cropping the section to see what compositionally works within that square or rectangle. That's what they're doing. You just blew my mind. Yeah. <laughs> also, when you did this, when you went from here to here, I was like, what did you do? Your hands can move like that? You could be long or it could be square what? or you can do it this way depending on the orientation of your paper. So, so like what I did, Wow. is if we want to crop this down to a four by six postcard, which is the size of the postcard that we will be mailing, you can actually cut that out on your paper and play around oh. and say like, I actually just want to paint this section. Ignore, sorry, I reuse scrap paper, so ignore those, <laughs> those things. But like, I want to paint this section or I actually, I want to paint this. So I chose to paint this, okay? So that's how I came up with this. And you can do this for any of our projects. This is a great tool for you guys to learn how to look for um, things compositionally. So let's take our daffodils, for example, and be like, okay, well, that's not very exciting. And maybe how this is set up, it doesn't make sense for it to be horizontal. Mm -hmm. Maybe we should move that and be like, okay. Oh, snap. Or like this one I think is stronger over here. Oh, yeah. So like that doesn't feel good. These are too close to the edge, it feels cut off. So you kind of can just play with the composition and we'll do one more. And I think um, this one would just turn into like a pattern, right? And actually we had a lovely person send in a postcard to us with this design on the card and it was just the whole front of the card and it was beautiful and it turned out lovely. But like, that is lovely. I would still keep this one vert vertical because when I move it horizontal, it doesn't feel. That one could work actually. I like that one. You see that? So anyways, just showing you guys that like as the artists, as the creatives, you have permission to look at this vast world around you and crop it down into something that you want to pay attention to or draw attention to because like this is a beautiful painting here. And by editing things out and cropping it down, it can give you a very different feeling. This right here is a completely different painting than this right here. Totally. And even just the sky, especially because it takes out like this green bottom. So it's just really, really like warm top. You see what I'm saying? I really like that one right there because the, uh, not the, I'm sorry, the green and no mm -hmm. super yellow sky makes me think of a nice place to just like do a, picnic or a camp out. This reminds me of the sound of music. Don't you just see Flora, Floraline Maria uh, just like twirling around? I can around? hear the hills singing. Me too. <laughs> That's wow. a great, 
Okay. Okay. So this is what we are painting. So I cr went in and I cropped in on this painting. So I have my postcard. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. If you have an outline, it's easier because you can just put the outline on top. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to match up this, like eyeball the section. And this takes a little bit of drawing and can be tricky. So like, just be kind to yourself. If it's easier for you to like block it off this way, so then you're just like eyeballing it from there, you can. So okay, this is what I'm trying to mimic. So halfway up, I got a mountain coming in and it goes down almost all the way. Then not totally in the middle, but like a little off to the left of the middle. This mountain comes in, goes up. I got a sun right here. Okay, I got some cloud work here, a little bit here, and a little bit there. Okay? Cool. That's it. Now on this one, I actually didn't include that in this, where you can see like corners of a third mountain. And I don't know if it works over here, but I kind of like it right there. What do you think, Keenan? Should I put that in there or should I leave it out, this corner mountain? I think you should put it in there. Okay. I don't have a reason. I like that it actually is bringing in a darker value in the corner and gives the hint that there is another layer that we just can't see. Yes, like the possibilities. Yeah, where like the viewer's like, oh, I kind of want to, what's going on? I want to be in there, you know? This? So I'm just going to add that right there. Oh, yeah, that looks nice. Okay. That is nice. Oh, <laughs> well, I did this on the postcard that I don't have taped down. <laughs> So I'm gonna redraw it really quick. And sorry about that, you guys. Again, just eyeballing it. It doesn't have to be perfect. That's not what we're about here. Okay. So I'm gonna leave this, my reference here to look at while we paint. And so we're gonna be following and using the same colors um, so in uh, that we use for the spring sunset project. So I have um, tiger orange, I have azure blue, I have rose red, and I have orchid, okay? And I have, I'm just using colors left over on my palette. The really, the thing I absolutely adore about watercolors is they reconstitute with water, which means even if they dried, you add water to it, they come right back up and you continue using them. That's why usually watercolor tubes are tiny. Itty bitty watercolor. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna do the sky first, then I'm gonna do my mountains, and then I'm gonna do my clouds. And so very first step, I'm going to grab some clean water. I'm going to put water around the sun. And I wanna work fairly quickly here. And it's just water, so you might not be able to see anything just yet. And then I'm going to take my tiger orange, drop in color around that sun, and then blend that yellow orange color out. I want it to be the brightest, like the most saturated around that sun. And this is where cropping images gets a little bit tricky. Um, and what I noticed myself doing when I was painting this project is that because I know that like I'm using this, I, I noticed that I was forcing myself to add blue at the top of my sky. But actually if you crop it down, we don't really see the blue. So that's where sometimes like, just to like, um, to look at something and crop it down, that's why using like a finder like this where it's already cropped is much easier because then you don't get distracted or confused by the elements that aren't in it. Okay, and then I mixed a little bit of rose red with my tiger orange to get kind of like a peach. I'm gonna put that at the top. Like so. Kind of just blending out here. And then at the very top, I'm gonna to mix a little bit of orchid with my rose red. 
to get more like a purpley pink color. Ooh, that's pretty. That is pretty. Kind of put that in near the top. Okay, that's our sky. And then I'm gonna go back in later and add clouds. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my mountains. Now you can do two things. One, you can wait for this to dry completely before you add your mountains. And if you have the time, I would highly suggest doing that because if this purple mountain touches this yellow sky and it's wet, that purple is gonna bleed everywhere. So you can either walk away and grab a snack or if you have a heat gun, you can use a heat gun to actually dry your painting a lot faster so you don't have to wait for it to air dry. What I do sometimes just for the effectiveness of teaching and being able to do things on video live is I will just leave a tiny, tiny white line in between my sky and the mountain so they're not actually touching each other and that way the colors won't bleed into each other. And I do that even when I'm not teaching, if I'm just like, I just want to move on. I'm just ready to go. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it just depends on like your painting and what you're trying to do. And if you're, if you want to live on the edge a little bit, mm, I guess. Live on that edge. <laughs> on edge Which you guys know me. That's what I like to do. <laughs> so I'm grabbing a little bit of Tahoe blue, a little bit of orchid and a little bit of rose red to get kind of like this purpley blue that's slightly desaturated. Would you say bluish? I would say bluish. Perfect. <laughs> and then leaving that thin line. Put that in and use water just to blend that out. Now, this is the mountain that's farthest away from us. So it's going to be our lightest value. So really don't shy away from adding water to this to make this a light color. Okay. And look at that, that's done, that's a mountain. Now we're gonna do our second mountain here, and this one needs to be a darker value because it's a little bit closer to us in the painting. So I'm just gonna pick up more paint, and same thing. Try and avoid, so not only am I avoiding the sky, I'm avoiding this first mountain that I put in as well. And I'm just picking up paint and water simultaneously to finish painting it in. I wanna make sure that I'm picking them up both up though, because if I was just using water to spread it, it would turn into a lighter value than I want it to be. So that's why I'm making sure I'm grabbing water and also paint, so I'm keeping the value that I wanna keep it. If I wanted to make the value darker as I painted it, I would be picking up more paint than water. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Okay. In so, practice, that is difficult for me. It is very difficult, and I'm really glad you brought attention to that, Keenan, because understanding the paint and water balance in order to get the values that you want to achieve in a watercolor painting takes practice. So if it does not come to you right away, it's not because you're not good at watercolor. It's not because this medium isn't for you. It's simply because it's one of those things that the more that you do it, the easier it will be for you to understand the balance of what you need on your paintbrush. And that's one of those things that I can give you guys tips and I can tell you exactly what it is that I'm doing, but you are the ones that have to put in that practice in order to get a feel for what you need, depending on what it is that you're painting. So it just takes time. And I know that that's frustrating, but absolutely you guys can do it, so. Totally. Totally. That's why I like washes. Yeah. So it's fun to play with, and it helped me learn a little bit more ink, or excuse me, watercolor and or water ratios. Yeah, and like even just every day, um, taking a scratch paper and practicing that, going from a light value to a dark value every day a little bit is a great way to practice. So if I'm just like, okay, let's say I'm gonna do blue. Okay, here's a little bit of blue. That's a really light wash, okay? I'm gonna grab a little bit more blue. And then like just practicing, paying attention to how much paint you're picking up on your brush. And if you can see my palette here, I'm only t like going along the edge here and grabbing as mm -hmm. much as I think that I need. 
just adding little by little. And then when I get to the part that's like, I need this to be the darkest thing, that's when I'm like going into the, to like the most concentrated- The belly of the beast. The belly of the beast yeah. of the paint. And that's where I'm gonna get my darkest value. But like paying attention to this. And then the next thing that's really, really important for you guys, and I know that we're going off script a little bit here and I hope that's okay, but the next like, hurdle after that is being able to look at a painting and understanding where it lands on your value scale. Mm. So then let's say you do this and you can do it in black and white or you can do it in any color, but then you try and match it oh. with what you have going on. So then like if you're looking at this and you're trying to match and if I'm looking at this flower right here. I'm like, okay, this yellow wash that's right here, that is right here. You see this? Yeah. And then I would say this edge is more here. And then this center, or like right here at the edge of the petal, that's here. You see what I'm saying? Totally. So like that in order for you guys to be able to create your own artwork and be able to create original art without having to follow a tutorial, this is a huge step into learning how to understand the values that you need to mimic in order to create form. Okay? Cool. So great exercises. And it just, again, it takes time where eventually, if you do this enough, and if you practice this enough, then soon your eye will be trained to look for it without having to have a guide next to it. And your, your eyes will be able to tell, there's a lighter value, there's a medium value, and there's a really dark value. And your eyes will just automatically pick that up. But it's training your eyes to see and to look for something when like, that's not usually trained in us. And honestly, that's what a lot of art school is, is like literally just sitting and looking at something and trying to understand what your eye is actually seeing instead of what your brain is telling you that you see. Because your brain, all your brain is telling you is this is a flower and then it's moved on, right? Because our brain is super efficient. So like you have to like stop and look. Hmm. Okay, we went <laughs> a little off there, but. I felt that was a really good lesson and Keenan, those were great questions. Okay, and that's perfect because it gave us drying time so we can do our last mountain, our corner mountain here that's not on the original but I thought Keenan's suggestion to add it in I thought was great. So I'm gonna grab more paint, mix a darker value, and just put in this corner mountain here. And this one needs to be the darkest one. Ooh, that turned it. I added some orange to it to make it even darker and that turned it green, which is not a huge deal. I'll just add red to that. That's another thing I hadn't noticed until you started pointing things out, hmm. was what colors are in a thing. Mm -hmm. And that also is one of, that just takes time to pay attention to. Yeah. That's it. And training your eye to look for those colors. Actually, I took this class. It was one of my favorite classes. Um, it was called, it was called collage and assemblage, <laughs> and my husband always made fun of it because it's assemblage, but the actual pronunciation of it is assemblage, and it's basically like three-dimensional collaging. So, like what? with three-dimensional forms in a three-dimensional space instead of paper on paper. Does that make any sense? I think so. So you're taking these elements and assembling them together compositionally on the wall. Like That is sweet. So instead of like, uh, it's so fun. So instead of like a, um, what is this called? Like a vase or like yeah. pottery or something like that. It's not like, that's three dimensional, but it's taking pieces and as if the world is the canvas. Cool. Yeah, and the space is the canvas and you're assembling three dimensional objects within that area. Cool one of my favorite classes of all time. Anyways, I loved it because so much of it was just looking and understanding the composition of things. And so like for an entire class period, I would sit and I would look at like the corner, like wherever my workspace was and I would place things 
and I would look at it for like 20 minutes. And then I'd be like, move something. And then I would step back and I would look at it. And it was insane. It was so fun. <laughs> <laughs> Kenan's like, you're it's, telling me in your it class. It sounded cool. And then you told me you sat there and stared at stuff. Well, but that is. But like you said before, you have to look at something to see what it's made of. That is training your eye to yeah. see something. And I know it sounds so silly. I know it sounds so silly to sit and stare at something for 20 minutes. I get that. <laughs> I get it. But like. How else are you going to be able to notice the nuances of something if you don't take the time to actually look at it and see it for what it is? If you never take the time to pause and pay attention, you will not be able to pick up those details that are necessary for you to communicate them on whatever it is that you are making. Wow. Okay, let's go back to the painting. <laughs> <sighs> it's like there are life lessons in here. It's like either they're going to love this tutorial or hate this tutorial. Like, I came here to paint. <laughs> they're like, my painting has been dry for 20 minutes, Sarah. <laughs> I've eaten all of my snacks. I have to go back to the store. I literally have no more food. That's how long that you've been like talking. a gift then, really. <laughs> well, then you're welcome. <laughs> go ahead and get some thin Oreos for me. <laughs> okay, so we got our mountains. We're going to go back in and do the sky, the clouds, okay? So I'm going to take a little bit of my rose red and a little bit of my tiger orange and mix like this color here, which is like a pink peachy. So it's a mixture of the, of the orange and the red together. I'm going to add some water to that so it's not too dark. And then like right above, I'm just going to put these horizontal lines in. It doesn't, I, again, doesn't need to be perfect. Now I'm just going to take water and kind of blend out the edges. And then there's like smaller ones here. And then up here, those ones are more purpley, so I'm going to add a little bit more orchid into that mixture. I like the word purpley. <laughs> Me too. Put those in there. And then I, I like to grab water and just kind of soften the edges. You don't have to. Sometimes that like rough brush texture is really, really nice. And if you like, like, let me show you what I'm talking about. So like if you like a dry brush texture, you see that? Oh yeah. You see, like sometimes that's really nice to have in a painting. So if you don't want to like add water and smooth it out and you like that kind of dry brush texture, you get to choose that because you're the artist. But for these, I want these clouds to feel soft, as if they transition into the sky kind mm. of thing. Like clouds. <laughs> like clouds. And what's cool about clouds is there's so many different variations of clouds, too. Some of them feel substantial. Some of them look like you can grab them. Gargantuan. Yeah. And like those, there is a huge distinction between the form of the cloud and the sky, where some other clouds are like barely there. And like... Almost like you know that you could just stick your hand right through there, you know? Yes. I have a drone, and I saw clouds that mm -hmm. were very low, and I decided to fly to them. They were not that low. <laughs> I was wrong. Okay, we are done here, but I want to point out something to you. Looking at my painting, I love this corner mountain, but I feel like it's so dark. The value, do you see? I feel like it's sticking out. Yes. So when this happens and you're like, you have two options. You can either adjust all of these other values and bring those down to like darken everything essentially to match this so this doesn't feel so out of place. Or you can lighten this up, which is what I'm gonna do because that seems a lot easier. Mm. So I'm just gonna take a damp brush, clean, and lift up some of the color. Oh, look at that. And if you need to add more water, you can. Now remember, it's a balance. We don't want to lift up so much that it becomes a lighter value than these two. We still want it to be the darkest value, but we still want it to feel like it lives in this world that these other elements are in. 
So that's why I'm adjusting it. And bam, that feels so much better. Agreed. Doesn't that feel like that fits in there now where you're like, oh yeah, that's totally the next mountain. Looks really good. Okay, now we get to remove the tape, which is my favorite part. Yes. And this is the best tape. Yes. I bet you if I let that, if I would have let that dry before I removed that tape, that would have been a clean edge. That was my bad. It's okay. It's all wet. This tape is magical though. I know we've talked a lot about it. I really hope you guys love it the way that I love it. If you have no idea what tape I'm talking about, oh yeah, that's because I was so wet. If you have no idea, this is the, this is Holbein soft tape on our website. It's, it's on for sale now too. It's so if you, um, or it's part of the May subscription box. Hello. So either way, you're gonna get this tape and you're gonna like it. And you're gonna, and you're gonna like it. <laughs> Uh, or else? Is or, that like <laughs> I would never say that. Out loud. Oh. Just text right here that says, or oh, else. else. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Okay. And that's it. And then it's so fun. I just love doing things like this. That is so cool. And actually I've been seeing stuff on like Instagram and stuff where artists are actually doing this, where like they go out into a field and then they choose an area and they paint it and then they hold that painted card up to the what? real world and take a picture and it lines up perfectly. It's so fun, it's such a fun idea. So I thought it'd be great to teach you guys how to do this because so much of learning something is playing and experimenting and having fun and figuring out how to do that and coming up with creative solutions and trying new things and sometimes you fail and sometimes you don't fail but everything is learning and that's why we're here is just to improve so i hope you guys take the time to do this for High School. also i'm really grateful that keenan lives around here because he knew how to pronounce this high school and i did not so he saved me from some embarrassment it was gonna be really good <laughs> so thank you keenan and if you guys don't know what let's make art matter is what we do and this is something we're very, very passionate about as a company, is in every single one of our subscription boxes for all of our mediums, we include a postcard that is pre-addressed and pre-stamped. And we choose a recipient who is nominated by one of you guys, our wonderful community. And the whole point is just to send them love because really life is hard. And because sometimes we feel alone and sometimes we think, I don't know, I, I feel like there's amazing technology these days that are meant to help us connect, but sometimes I think it also makes us feel more alone. And it's a tricky balance. And I just, I think it's important for us to take the time out of our busy, busy lives to help someone else know that someone is thinking of them. And if we can just all do that as a community, there's so much power in that. It matters. Like being able to paint something for someone else makes them feel special. And there is an amazing power that art has where we know that sometimes we don't know the right words to say. Um, and so we end up not saying anything because we don't want to hurt their feelings. But the wonderful thing about art is like, this is enough to just say like, and you just write, I'm thinking about you. That's it, that's all it's gotta be. And then um, I just, I love that you guys take the time to do this. And if you don't have time for anything else, if you don't have time for an hour project every week, I understand, make time for this. I would argue make time for the other thing because there are so many benefits to creating. But like, this is where this is where it like connects us, you know? This is how we can feel together and supportive and kind. Um, so that's our Let's Make Art Matter idea. If you have someone that you would like to nominate, you can nominate them on our website. Just go to letsmakeart.com, scroll to the bottom. There's a nominate section there. Um, for the, these high schoolers, for this Kansas City and for this teacher who reached out, thank you so much for thinking about them. 
and I really hope you guys take the time to help these kids feel loved and seen because they've had a really, really weird experience <laughs> and hard. So um, let's show them some love and support. And um, Keenan, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you guys later. Bye.